Guys, I'm bringing this 1970s vanity back to life on site. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. An odd-shaped vanity like this, you're not just gonna run to Home Depot or a, or a hardware store and pick up prefabricated laminate and slap it together and have a new countertop in a weekend. You're gonna have to get custom laminate made or cultured marble or solid surface, whatever you wanna do, and that's a weeks and weeks of wait time. I'm gonna show you right now how to do this in a weekend without removing your existing surfaces. I'm gonna remove the plumbing. I'm gonna prep this cultured marble vanity to accept stone coat epoxy. The first step, I'm gonna remove my plumbing. I'm gonna remove my tailpiece and the faucet. Once that's removed, I'm gonna plastic off the inside of my sink because we're gonna allow the epoxy to flow and drain right through my sink. We're gonna coat the top, we're gonna coat the sink, we're gonna coat the backsplash in place, cover it with clear epoxy. This project's gonna be sweet and it's gonna look way better than this green shade of ancient marble that lost popularity in about 1977. So what I'm doing in here is just killing off my water valves and you always wanna test them. As a, as a countertop guy, this is a true story. I shut my valves off and I didn't test this, right? Sometimes the hot water valves can go bad. There's a gasket in there. It gets deteriorated over time. You think the valve's off, but it's not. I did that, I shut off my valve. I get my crescent wrench, I'm popping off the water line because we're removing the vanity for granite and the thing is full pressure. And uh, it, <laughs> I had to pinch my thumb on it while the homeowner ran and shut the water off. It was a nightmare. So that doesn't happen to you. Just run your water after you turned off those valves. Nothing comes on. You're good to go. You can remove your water lines. Drink. <laughs> we're ready to clean this bad boy up. So look guys right here, we got chip going on right here. So I'm gonna mix up some Bondo after I clean up. We'll patch that up, sand it back. Never know that was there. Yeah, I'm gonna put some plastic in the bottom because we're gonna have some epoxy coming through here and some epoxy draining through the sink and I don't wanna end up here in my bottom of my sink cabinet. So I'm gonna make a nice plastic bottom for it. The next step, I'm using TSP, trisodium phosphate. That's a very, very good degreaser and overall cleaner to get rid of this residue that's all over this vanity. That makes quick work of getting rid of the grease and grime before we start to sand and prep this vanity for some bonding primer. I start out with the delicate surface tape. That way I don't mess up my cabinets. I don't mess up any fresh paint on the walls. Customer did a really good job taping off the floor with the RAM board. They watched some videos, helped me prep for this project. The orange tape is your perimeter RAM board tape. That won't stick to any finished flooring. It's really nice stuff. Great job watching our prep videos. I really make sure I iron on this delicate tape. It, it releases easy, so take time to really iron it on there this is our foundation to hold the plastic to the cabinets. Okay. I'm holding my tape right to the paint line. This is 3.5 mil plastic you can pick up at the Home Depot. It's already cut three and a half feet. It works perfect to tape off underneath your countertop to the floor to protect those cabinets. In this instance, we're gonna be saving tons of time covering up our cabinet and prepping this countertop versus building this fresh uh, out of wood. If we were racing Home Depot, I'd be so far ahead already. How Home Depot does their countertops since I did work for them is, you go in with your, you bring your measurements in the Home Depot, they give you a quote, you pay in full, then they send the contractor out to your house. <laughs> like what? Normally, you're not paying in full until the countertop job is completed. So you pay in full, 
Then they send the contractor out when he's not too busy. And then they build the countertop. Then they come back and install them. They were advertising in as little as three weeks. And I'm like, oh man, that's pretty quick for custom. And then I go to start talking to the guy. And that's when he says, oh, well, actually our turnaround's more like six to eight weeks. So you're gonna pay for, in, for your countertops in full and not get to enjoy them for six to eight weeks. That's crazy. Okay. We're prepped off, the cabinet's taped, the wall's been papered off. We could get to work and not worry about hurting anything that's gonna permanently live in this bathroom. The next step, I've pre-mixed some TSP, trisodium phosphate. Dilute your TSP per the manufacturer's instructions and then heavily wet the area you wanna clean. I put it in this mist bottle and then we're just gonna wet this whole area and let this soak in there. All right, the TSP's been sitting. Grab some gloves. I got a blue sponge here, but you could use paper towels or whatever. And we're just gonna scrub this top really, really well. We're just getting rid of all this grime and grease before I start to sand and prep this top for the bonding primer. That grease and grime is a thing of the past. The next step, I'm gonna use 60 grit on this sander and rough up the backsplash, the surface, and the edges. Then I'm gonna mix up some Bondo and get, fill up this chip right here. So that's a thing of the past. Then we're gonna apply the bonding primer. We're gonna create a mechanical bond here and the bonding primer creates a chemical bond. That way our epoxy layer is gonna bite very, very well to this slick existing surface. All right, guys, I'm gonna let that Bondo dry. About a half hour, we'll come back and sand that, then we're ready for the bonding primer. The Bondo's nice and dry. I'm gonna get some 220 grit sandpaper, and then after we apply the bonding primer, the undercoat, all the epoxy, you're never gonna know there was a big giant chip out of this sink. We're saving this. We're perfect. Isopropyl alcohol. Guys, the bonding primer is a very crucial step only when going over smooth, slick surfaces like cultured marble, granite, solid surface, anything like that, you're gonna rough it up and then apply a thin layer of bonding primer, let that dry, and now we're ready. The, pre the project is now like a sheet of wood ready for the undercoat. There's no need to make your whole top opaque white with this bonding primer. It's okay if the undertones or the colors from the countertop show through, that's completely normal. This is just uh, adding another layer of bond, a chemical bond to the countertop. So a thin uniform layer is all that's needed when, when applying the bonding primer. We're gonna apply a thin layer to the entire project, including the sink bowl. We're gonna go to the backsplash, the top of the backsplash and the sink bowl. Just using one of our chop brushes to apply a thin layer to the sink bowl. Okay. The bonding primer will be dry in probably about one hour. I'm gonna let that dry, come back and apply a brown undercoat. We're on 
hour three or four of the project when they wanted us to wait seven weeks for a simple laminate job. Guys, let's let this dry. We'll come back for some brown undercoat. All right, that layer of bonding primer is complete. We're ready to proceed like this project is over a sheet of wood. I'm gonna apply two coats of paint and make this countertop a very light brown. Let's get started. We all know how to paint. Pretty simple. Let that dry. Cool, that's already looking better. Let that dry and come back and apply the second coat. And then we're gonna start building this piece nice and dry. Let's do coat number two. Okay, let this paint dry and we'll be back for the next step. Guys, I'm on site. I've prepped this cultured marble vanity. We're ready to apply the stone spray. What's the stone spray? It's from Rust-Oleum. We have it available at our website. This is perfect for going over existing surfaces with existing backsplash and integrated sinks. Step one, shake this stuff up really, really good. And we're gonna test out the spray to make sure it's functioning properly. Okay, that's looking good, it's looking perfect. What you don't wanna do is just open up the stone spray and let that spray in one location on your countertop. We're gonna pump our spray nozzle and we're gonna be about 12 to 18 inches away. I'm gonna start on my edges and my backsplash and my sink. I'm gonna lightly apply the stone spray, not go too heavy. You can add a little bit at a time, you can't remove any. So I'll start real light on my edges and my backsplash and my sink and then I'll fill the rest of the field or the countertop with the stone spray. When that dries in three to four hours, we're ready for epoxy. I'm going to apply two coats of clear stone coat countertop epoxy. That's gonna protect my stone spray and make this countertop food safe. All right, let's get to spraying some stone spray. We've already tested the spray nozzle and I'm gonna start on my edges. I've plastic off the cabinets, I've papered off above my backsplash I'm ready to do what I need to do to get this to look really cool without damaging anything that's existing in my, on my job site. So let's start with our edges. Now I'm gonna hit the top of the backsplash. I'm just trying to focus in the sink, but you see, I'm kind of getting stone spray all over the place. That's okay, because then I'll feather my countertop back into it. I'll feather the surface back into this sink. I'm not gonna hit my, my backsplash here. Okay, my backsplash edges sink are complete. I'm now gonna feather in and fill in any bare spots, make it completely uniform. Now I'm just gonna look at the project as a whole, hit any spots that aren't as uniform as others, which is looking pretty good. Just kind of making it rain down in areas like right here's a little less going on, so. Okay guys, I'm gonna let this dry three to six hours. I'll be back when it's nice and dry for the next step, which is applying coat one of two of our clear stone coat countertop epoxy. guys I'm back it's the next day the stone spray is really dry really uniform it looks fantastic I'm here to put on coat one of two of our clear stone coat countertop epoxy that process is super simple why am I doing two coats because of my vertical surfaces and because that stone spray is kind of 3d I went pretty heavy I want this as smooth as possible so I'm gonna do a one coat today let it dry, I'll come back tomorrow, do another coat, but I'll sand any high points, any ridges that may be on that vertical surface. I'll sand that down flat, that second coat goes on, it'll be nice and smooth and perfect. This vanity is gonna look so much better than it did before.
one ounce per square foot. Not gonna need a lot here. 20 ounces of B, followed by 20 ounces of A. Stone coat epoxy is a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, not weight. So I'm counting on my little ounces on the side of my bucket here. Put 20 ounces of A, we're gonna put 20 ounces of B. My epoxy's a little thick right now. That's because it's winter here in Oregon. And to help that, I would put this in front of a space heater, warm it up, that'll thin it down some, make it a little easier to mix. All right, I'm gonna use my paddle mixer and I'm gonna mix for two minutes, holding on to that bucket. You can see these, the smaller batch turns white. That's because I'm entraining air into the epoxy while I mix with this giant paddle. It's totally normal. The air comes right out with the heat source once you get the epoxy out of the bucket. Midway through, slow down, hit the sides and bottom. Pick it back up for about another minute. Before I get going, I'm gonna de-shed my chop brush. Pull on any loose bristles. Kinda get crazy with it. Pull on it, get violent. Looking pretty good. If any come out, that's good. You don't want those in the epoxy. We made these bristles black for a reason, so they pop and show in the epoxy if any are to come loose. We're gonna take our mixed epoxy and pour it in the center of the countertop. We're gonna make two masses here. Then we're gonna take the notch trowel and trowel with light pressure. I'm gonna trowel my epoxy over itself here. What that does is mix the epoxy another time here. Start to spread the material without getting close to the edges yet. I'm gonna take my material and walk it up the backsplash. Just let this trowel glide nice and easy over the countertop. Same thing here, let's get some up on the backsplash. And I'm gonna trowel my epoxy out. Got my backsplash all coated. I'm gonna use my brush too to hit that splash. All right, I'm gonna now get my brush here, dip it in my epoxy, and use the brush to apply it to my thin top backsplash edge. That's a little small edge there, it's kind of tricky to get to. And at the same time, I'm gonna be smoothing down this vertical surface with my brush. I troweled my epoxy up on there and now I'm gonna smooth it down here with light pressure with the side of my chop brush. Man, the, this piece comes to life as soon as this epoxy gets on there. The epoxy makes everything have the wet look real vivid. Come hit the rest of this edge. So rub the backsplash out with your brush. I'm gonna rub this one out. Get some epoxy over our front edges here. Use my gloved hand to rub those edges out. Make sure they're fully coated. I'm gonna chop my top now. I just evenly distributed the epoxy with my notch trowel. Now I'm gonna use the heel of the brush to remove any tr trowel lines. And this also mixes my material another time here on the surface of the countertop. Keep an eye out for any black bristles while you do this process. None so far, just doing this randomly. All right, now I'm gonna coat my sink. I'm just gonna dip my brush in and paint a nice coating of epoxy inside my sink bowl. This thing just comes to life, wow. I think I see a bristle. Yep. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna grab a heat source. I'm gonna remove the air really quickly by using a propane torch. You can also use a heat gun. In a sweeping motion, I'll cover the entire surface of the countertop. This will probably take three to four different times. I'll watch my epoxy become crystal clear as the torch goes over and over the epoxy. good practice to let the epoxy cool in between torchings just a couple minutes or so it's really difficult to overheat the epoxy but it can be done just allow the epoxy to cool a minute or so in between torchings this clear coat is ready to cure before I leave and while my epoxy is still fresh I'm gonna remove any of my masking from the sides and top of this backsplash I'll leave it here where my cabinet is to protect those cabinets, but I don't want my tape and paper to fuse in where I put my epoxy on top of the backsplash. So I'm gonna score that paint line and peel that mask. All right, folks, I'm back on site. It's the next day, and that first coat has dried perfectly. It's laid out nice and smooth. It's a little bit bumpy on that vertical surface, and that's why I'm back for a second clear coat. I'm also gonna sand the surface and the edges and my sink bowl. I'll mix up another clear coat of epoxy, apply it the same way I did that first coat. I'll come back tomorrow and apply the ultimate top coat, and then it's plumbing, project is done. We did this way faster than you could have done it hiring a professional. I was ready to spray my stone spray on this project in as little as three hours. That's all it took me to prep the floor, cabinets, and get this countertop ready for the stone spray. I had a little bit of a wait time to let the stone spray dry. I was back the next day to apply a clear coat of epoxy. That took me about an hour and a half, and that's because I was filming the process. Applying a clear coat of epoxy is really simple. You just gotta start out with a good mix. Have a nice heat source to remove the air bubbles you incorporate into the epoxy while mixing and let that puppy cure. Turn off any vents that are blowing air over your curing epoxy. That way it lays out perfectly smooth. All right, enough jabbering. I'm gonna get to sanding and then I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and apply one more clear coat. The vertical surfaces is your thinnest coverage. So use caution when sanding those vertical surfaces. That's why I'm doing it by hand. You can really feel where that gets smooth. You can see it change colors. It goes from glossy to now foggy. But when I put that next coat of epoxy on, it becomes crystal clear again. The smoother I get this before the next coating, the smoother the finished product will be. Woo, that's nice. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna use this same sponge to hit my edges. This sponge works really nice to, to sand 3D and vertical surfaces. That first coat of epoxy nearly had this perfect. I was really pleased with it. The difference between good and great is about that big. So rather than just be okay with good, I'm gonna make this great with one more coat of epoxy. Just gonna use that 220 on a little block, a sanding block, to rough up the whole surface. I've already hit the backsplash in my sink. I'm creating a mechanical bond. If I came back to my countertop 15 to 18 hours later and it was still tacky, no need to sand before the next coat of epoxy, it will chemically bond very well. All right, let's clean that dust off with some isopropyl alcohol.
my second clear coat is complete. I'm gonna let this cure overnight. I'll be back to apply the ultimate top coat. Finalize this job. What a big difference. What a giant change from the 1970s. I wasn't born in the 1970s, so I have no, re the only reference I have is movies. But this looks good. This looks really pretty in person, guys. All right, with this cure, we'll be back for the next step, which is the final step, the ultimate top coat. The second coat of epoxy laid out perfectly. This countertop job could be complete. I'm gonna take the durability up one more notch and apply the glossy version of the ultimate top coat. To properly prep for the ultimate top coat, now that my epoxy is cured over 24 hours, I'm gonna lightly sand with 220 grit sandpaper just by hand. I'm gonna hit the backsplash, the surface, and the edges. When that's complete, I will clean the project with 91% isopropyl alcohol. I forgot, I'm also gonna sand my sink. And then it's time to apply the ultimate top coat. We'll mix, we'll add some water, we'll apply with a wet roller, then we'll remove excess material with a dry roller. I'm gonna show you just how to do it step by step really quick. Step one, I'm gonna sand my surface. Just 220 grit on a sanding block. All we're looking for is a light scuffing here. If you have any imperfections, any high points, any nibs or nubs from dust or anything, now would be the time to sand those down flat. I almost feel sad sanding it, but I know that ultimate top coat adds durability that you can't get anywhere else. It's the best durability you can find on an epoxy countertop in the whole industry. You heard it here first. Next step, we're gonna get rid of that dust with just a paper towel. We will clean with 91% isopropyl alcohol. Just gets rid of any residual dust. Man, that backsplash is smooth. Woo! That second coat really got all those ripples out of that backsplash. Real smooth. So vertical surfaces, best for two coats. We use quarter inch nap microfiber rollers, but they have lint on them, so step one, before even mixing up your top coat, I'm gonna get rid of that lint with some masking tape. Delint your rollers just by rolling them on sticky tape. Wow, that gets a lot of it out. Check that out. See all that? Do that to all your rollers. I'm gonna use one wet roller and two dry rollers for this size project. There's my wet roller. And I use these little four inch rollers whenever I do a sink. They do a real good job of evening out and getting rid of lap lines and side small curvy surfaces like your undermount integrated sinks. Tools needed for the ultimate top coat, a roller tray, quarter inch microfiber rollers on a roller frame, a mixing bucket and a stick, and the ultimate top coat and a little bit of water. So the glossy ultimate top coat, the only difference is you're gonna wanna add more water. This comes out of the jar much thicker than the natural finish of our ultimate top coat. Give part A a vigorous shake before mixing part A and B together. Going off my two to one graph. Boom. With a paint stick, mix up part A and B of the ultimate top coat vigorously for a minute or so. And then we're gonna add some water. So right out of the jar, right out of the bottles, mixed for about a minute, you can see how thick. It barely wants to come off my stick. It's really thick. It's way thicker than latex paint. I wanna get this to be the consistency of thin latex paint. And we're gonna do that by adding some water a little bit at a time, and we'll mix it up. I like to use smart water because it makes me feel like I'm really smart. So we're just gonna add that much to start. Kind of have a thin layer over the whole bucket. Slowly mix that in. You don't want to exceed 10% by volume of your top coat here. Then you're gonna start degrading the durability of it. A Little bit thinner. Wants to run off my stick a little bit more, but still a hair too thick. So I'm gonna add that same amount. If you haven't used the top coat before, I'd recommend doing a small sample piece. You learn a 
ton just mixing this stuff up. You'll feel when your material's the right consistency, it'll be really easy to mix and it'll run right off your stick. We're still a hair too thick. I'm gonna add a little bit more. That's gonna do it, I'm sure. I'm gonna lid my water. Scrape the sides as you do this, just to incorporate any undermixed top coat. I'm gonna show you what this looks like coming off the stick now, we're perfect. I told you, you're gonna feel when you're, when you're there. That's what you're looking for. Take your material out. Don't forget to tape off your backsplash. <laughs> Take the material, put it into a paint tray. Completely saturate your roller here and apply nice and heavy. We're gonna apply it to the surface and backsplash. So uh, right now I'm focusing on just applying it nice and heavy to all surfaces of the project including the tops of the backsplash. Don't forget your edges either. And I'm gonna grab my dry roller. So get your edges, all the backsplash. And now with the wet roller, we're gonna try to get it as uniform as possible before switching to the dry roller. Get off some of this material. I'm gonna use my finger. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna get me completely uniform here and then switch to my dry roller. All right, let's get to my dry roller now. All right, nice, fresh, clean, dry roller. And with light pressure, I'm gonna remove excess material. pushing in this dry roller in my 90s. You don't wanna leave any puddles of the top coat. And this dry roller does a good job of getting it out, so just kinda of push it in hard to the 90, pick up any puddle, and then we're gonna finish dry rolling the backsplash, and I'm gonna roll in and up. Hit those edges too, don't forget about those edges. I'm gonna switch out to a fresh dry roller now. Okay, that's looking great. Now I'm gonna hit my sink. Switching to my littler roller. I'll saturate it in the top coat here. Roll it off. And now apply heavy to your sink. Just trying to get rid of any thick lap lines right now before I dry roll. When your sink is nice and coated, most of the lap lines are gone or excess lines. Switch to that dry roller. Okay, with your fresh dry roller, same process as before. We're gonna remove material out of the sink. And this is such light pressure. And this will erase any of those bigger lap lines because the sinks are gonna be your trickiest part. Just take your time in here and get it as uniform as possible. And you don't want any heavy white lines. You wanna make sure all those heavy white lines are removed. Okay, and then when you have all the white lines gone in the sink, I use the light above to see if there's any heavy lap lines and there aren't. This thing looks really uniform and pretty. I am gonna let this thing dry. All right, the ultimate top coat is gonna dry overnight. This vanity will be ready for light use the next day. 
I'll be back tomorrow to show you how this looks. It's gonna look so pretty. Don't be alarmed when the Ultimate Top Coat looks milky. It dries crystal clear in the next few hours. It'll be dry to the touch within eight hours and ready for light use the next day. I'll be back tomorrow to show you how this bad boy turned out. I'll install the plumbing, clean up the project, and this thing is gonna be a wrap. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. I'll be back tomorrow to show you the final steps, which is cleanup time. Guys, it's the next day. My top coat has dried crystal clear. It looks fantastic on the spray on stone method. I'm gonna clean up my plastic. I'm gonna clean up my work area, install the plumbing, and then this vanity is ready for my customer. They'll be brushing their teeth tonight. Worked perfect. Caught all my epoxy in there. So the epoxy that drained down my sink has added a little bit to this perimeter. I'm gonna use my Dremel here to sand away a little bit around my tailpiece so it fits in nice and flush. It's a little bit too tight but that's just from allowing that epoxy to flow down that drain. This little 60 grit sanding wheel on the Dremel works perfectly. Bingo. Little plumber's putty. Make a snake of it. Let's go on the tailpiece. This seals up the water. clean up it's a wrap i was able to apply stone coat epoxy over this old worn out cultured marble vanity in as little as three days for 10 times less your time and money i used under one gallon of epoxy half a can of stone spray and half a kit of our ultimate top coat and that's all it took to bring this vanity to the 21st century. The before and afters on this project speak for itself. You guys can do this to renew your worn out vanities or countertops in your space in a single weekend. I just showed you exactly how to do it. Guys, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the process of applying stone coat epoxy over cultured marble. I'll personally answer every single one of them. Folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this and we'll see you on the next video. Stone